Here's a video on building a basic representation of a house in SketchUp. First I'll tap R for rectangles and click and drag out a rectangle from the origin point, which is where the axes meet. Just drag it out and let go. Usually I'll use a number block on the right side of the keys to type in measurements. So I'm going to type in 360, comma 480 and hit enter. So 360, it assumes inches. If I type in 360, if I type in a number, it assumes inches. I don't have to put in a quotation mark to designate inches. If I was putting in feet, um, 360 inches is the same as 30 feet. I would have to put in 30 apostrophe, comma, 40 apostrophe and hit enter. But if I type in just numbers, it assumes inches. All right, I'm going to hit the space bar, tap P, hit P for push pull, and click and drag up, hold the mouse button down. When I let go, I'm going to type in 10, enter. So I didn't have to put, even though it says 10 inches with a quotation mark in the bottom right hand corner in the dimension box, I only had to type in 10, enter to tell it to go up 10 inches. What I'll do is select the top surface. Just hit the space bar and click on it once to select that. It shows up as dots and I'm going to copy it. I could hit Command C on a Mac or Windows machine or I could uh, on a Chromebook it would be uh, Control C or I could also right click and use the little speedy guys over here and hit copy which is the second icon here. The reason I'm copying that surface is because I'm going to use it for the walls. Before I do the walls, I want to triple click this little block we've made. That's going to represent the floor. Right click and make it a group. I think I'm also going to right click and hide it. And that top surface that I copied before, I'm going to paste it back in by right clicking and hit the fourth icon here which is paste in place. That brings that in. The floor is still there, it's hidden, but we'll use this to make the walls. I'm going to hit the space bar and select it. I'm going to tap the F key, F is in fancy, click and drag in like this. When I let go, I'm going to type 5, enter, and that creates that 5 inch offset. F is for offset, so that creates that space. I'm going to click once in here and hit backspace and delete. Delete that. Then I can hit P for push pull and pull this up. And I'm going to type in 8 apostrophe, which will be 8 feet. 8 apostrophe, enter. And that gives me my walls. Then I'm going to triple click them and group them. Right click and group it. And at this point, I could go over to the tools on the right side, click on the eyeglasses and say at the top, choose unhide all and the floor is back. All right, we'll put in some doors and windows. I'm gonna tap T for the tape tool, click and drag on this line. This is, that's floor level now. So I'm just gonna pick a random point. It's best with the, the uh, tape tool for right now not to click on end points or midpoints. I'm just gonna hit tap T and then I'll click and drag up from here. Good idea to hit the up arrow key so it's locked into going straight up on the blue axis. And when I let go, I'm going to type in 80, enter. So the tops of doors and windows are typically set to be 80 inches off the floor. Now I could draw in a door. I could take a rectangle like this. Click and drag down like that. And when I look in the dimension box, I can see the first number is six foot eight. That is 80 inches. Six foot eight is 80 inches. So if that number is correct, which it is, it's sort of snapping to that line, I can type in just the second number. So in this case, I'm going to let go and type in comma, that tells it to be the second number, comma 36, enter. So now this rectangle is. 80 inches tall, 6 foot 8 by 36 inches wide. I'm going to tap M to move it and grab its top midpoint right there. I can start to drag it. 
I'm going to tap the right arrow key, that's the red axis, and then I can reach either up to the top or down on the bottom and find the midpoint. So by tapping the right arrow key, it's locked into that red axis. I can find the bottom midpoint of the floor, and here, there it is, and let go. So very often we'll do this, we'll, we'll position that, um, it's jumping around on me here, um, we'll position that first, and we might even do it, we're doing it right now, outside the wall group. And the reason we do this is because if you do it outside the wall group, it's not glued into the wall yet, and it, it's a little easier to move, maneuver it around. Okay, once I've got it there, I'm going to right click and choose cut. You could also use on a Chromebook Control X or on a computer Command X. I can cut it out. Now I have to get inside the wall group because you can't affect a group unless you get inside it. So I'll double click it. Now I have dotted lines so I know I'm inside it. And I can just paste that door back in. I'm going to right click and say paste in place fourth icon. Now I can't affect it unless I get in the group, so I'll double click, tap P for push pull, and push this back in. And I can if you go slowly you'll see a little indicator show up that says on face. But even if I pushed it or tried to push it way back through, um, I could just type in five enter. And that will give me a door opening. 